Hello, welcome to the Ed Bryant Scout Reservation edition of Talking with Tim's. I'm here today with our new council uh, program director, Joe Lewis, uh, who many of you who've attended camp know from the last several years. Uh, he's program director for the last three years and has jumped in uh, to take over the role uh, that Nick Rose served for the last six years. And we're excited again to have him as part of our, our scouting team. We're here today to talk to you a little bit about uh, Ed Bryant Scout Reservation and the 2020 season. I want to share with you that on June 1st, the officers of our volunteer executive board who run the council, we met and had discussions, uh, long heartfelt discussions about what our options are related to uh, our 2020 camping season. And after discussing the pros, the cons, the, the risks, the benefits, our officers voted to move forward with the 2020 camping season at Ed Bryant Scout Reservation. Now, the one change that we are gonna do and we've started to contact the units is week one will not happen. Uh, we, camp will start officially on June 28th and run through the end of the season. Those affected in week one have been contacted and will be given priority to move into another week. And we are at this point exploring adding an extra week of camp at the very end of the season so that we can accommodate everyone. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about some of the, the big picture things related to the 2020 camping season. And so I've asked uh, Joe Lewis to kind of sit in with us and share with you what's going to happen at Ed Bryant Scout Reservation this year. So, Joe, tell us about Ed Bryant 2020. Absolutely. So I think one of the most important things to note is that instead of t-shirts this year, we're actually going to be doing buffs. So if you don't know what a buff is, it's these little things that go around your neck and you can bring up on your face. They're going to have our EBSR logo on them. They're going to be bright red to go with the rest of camp and they're going to look great. And most importantly, they're going to keep us safe. So all of our staff and all of our campers are going to be required to wear some sort of face covering, whether it's the buff that we uh, provide you a face mask or something else. Another, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Another really important thing is our closed and open program. So each campsite is going to be a community based around 20 to 40 scouts. In that community, we're going to be rotating each community between the program areas and all of the merit badges and the special programs like uh, the forage, branding, tie dye, things like that will be offered as opportunities during your time in the area. So you'll have the opportunity to do whatever merit badge you'd like and whatever special program you'd like while you're in the area for your allotted time. Uh, okay, great, Joe, that's some important stuff and it's a little bit different than what we've done in the past, but I think the emphasis is pro open program as a culture at Ed Bryant is not going away. We're just amending it for the 2020 season so that we can operate. Absolutely, so open program is here to stay. We're going to augment it a little bit this year, and the next year we're hoping to have it back in full force. Okay. Now, Joe, I know that you know we want to. We one of the things that Ed Bright has been very popular with the last several years is the variety of program that we offer. Uh, with the COVID nineteen concerns and issues, I know there's going to be some areas and programs that we're not going to be able to run this year. Can you share that with us? Absolutely. So the only program areas that we feel like we can't operate this year are going to be the ATVs the Cowboy Action Shoot, and the Yellow River Adventure Base. So with those opportunities going away for this year alone, coming back next year, uh, we're also going to be expanding a few of our own programs in some of the other areas. Okay. One of the things um, that I think is, was a lot of questions that we, communi we communicated earlier to uh, our audience was related to um, the medical forms. Uh, for 2020. We know that with uh, the, the COVID-19 and everybody staying at home and businesses closing, that getting physicals for camp was going to be difficult. Can you talk about, uh, real briefly, about what, uh, re restate what the, uh, the plan is for our camp medicals, and then let's talk about the pre-camp screening and the pre-departure screening that we're asking our units to participate in. Absolutely. So this year, we're going to allow units to come to camp with a physical or a Part C of the uh, health form that is dated February 2019 or forward. So instead of having it only done within the last 12 months, we now have until February 2019 and forward. Another important thing about that is we're going to be sending out risk advisory statements uh, to all of the units that each camper will have to have filled out with themselves and also with a parent Pre-camp screenings will occur with the unit. 
before departure to camp. So forms will be given via online portals to all of our units so that they can fill out that they each scout in their unit and each adult in their unit has passed a pre-camp health screening. Uh, it's simple questions like, what is the temperature of the scout? Do they have any symptoms uh, such as coughing or anything of the sort? Okay. And I think the other thing also that we're going to be looking at with it is there's going to be some things changed this year that we cannot operate. I know we had shared earlier that family night would probably not happen this year, and that's what the case is going to be. And also the, the other issues we've got uh, related to um, the increased hand washing, and we're going to be issuing every scout uh, their own personal bottle of hand washer or hand sanitizer they can carry with them. Um, one of the things we wanted to talk about also is related to um, folks that have uh, special pre-existing conditions that may put them in a higher risk category for coming to camp. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so if you have any of the high risk category conditions or are of a high risk age outlined by the CDC uh, recommendations, we're going to require you to have written permission from your physician saying that they believe that you are able to come to camp and that you'll be safe doing so. Okay. And, and obviously with the uh, concentric circles or the communities that we're creating, that's going to help us with the strict social distancing and minimizing interaction. Uh, I know, can you talk about what we're looking at briefly about the, the couple of options related to meals? Because I know that'll be a question. Definitely. So the two big options that we're looking at for meals are the same options that we've offered the entire time that I've been at Ed Bryant. We're going to be offering patrol style cooking where meals can either be delivered to the campsite or you can pick them up from the dining hall, coolers of food that you cook in the campsite and you do everything in the campsite. Or we're also offering dining hall. So we're going to be expanding our dining hall seating in order to account for um, social distancing to keep people far apart while also offering that dining hall experience of being able to interact with the staff, and also be able to eat a nice meal that's cooked by our homegrown chef. And if we, one of the other options we're also looking at, if we need to go to shifts because of the size and capacity, about half of our troops do patrol cooking. So I think that's one thing that we will address and go with, and we will be working with the Juneau County Health Department and, and seeking their advice and their consultation. So there are a couple other options that we're looking at related to meals, but we are confident we can provide safe um, mealtime uh, service. The um, other thing that I, we, I think we're looking at is we're asking, you know, with the social distancing part of it, can you talk about tent uh, uh, requirements and, and sleeping arrangements we're looking at for camp? Absolutely. So the biggest thing that we'd like all of our campers to do is bring their own tent. Uh, the more that you can all just sleep in your own tent, the better. If you're unable to sleep in your own tent, we're also allowing family units to sleep together. So if a uh, two brothers or two sisters come together to camp, you can sleep in the same tent, but it's going to be important that you sleep head to foot. Okay, great. You know, one of the things that will happen over the next couple of, of weeks as we continue to go forward is we'll be communicating directly with those units that are signed up for camp and going in through a lot more details. We'll have some pre-camp Zoom meetings um, and other ways to communicate. One of the questions that came up also was related to if parents don't feel comfortable sending their kid to camp and they've already paid for camp is what are their the refund options? We will work with uh, refunds. We will also uh, provide the opportunity if they would like to roll over their fee to 2021, they can do that. The um, One of the challenges we know that we're going to be looking at for 2021 is we're having to hire additional staffing for this year to, to deal with the COVID crisis and also additional hand sanitizer. If you looked at how much sanitizer costs, you know, we're looking at about at least four 55-gallon drums times the, the amount, it's not an insignificant one. So anybody that rolls over their fee to 2021, we will honor the 2020 camp fee into next year. So those are other options that, that are place and we will deal with those on a, on a unit by unit uh, condition. The one thing we will look at is two weeks prior to your report date is where we'd like to be able to know if you're coming or not. Site deposits, if your troop decides not to come to camp, can be rolled over for the same week and same campsite into 2021. So I guess when we come down to it, uh, we have heard overwhelming support from our families and our units 
who basically want to come to camp in 2020. And we've also heard from some that are concerned about it. Ultimately, what comes down to you know your decision, whether you send your scout to Ed Bryant Scout Reservation is a discussion among your family. You have to decide what is the best thing for you. We will do everything we can to provide a safe in camp environment. And when you your unit shares with you the risk advisory statement, we hope that the parents will look at that and have a, a honest discussion among their, their, uh, their scouts and their scout leaders on how this affects them. We have made a strong commitment to make sure that we can do what needs to be done to provide a camp experience. After the last couple of months, we know and we've heard and we've seen that our kids need something desperate to become normal. And nothing is more normal than camp. The outdoors, the fresh air, the ultraviolet rays that uh, basically hit the COVID-19 virus are positive. They, you know, and we think that we can provide a safe, quality program for our youth. Now, should conditions change, and whether the Juneau County Health Department or the state of Wisconsin says otherwise, we will act accordingly. The paramount concern is to make sure of the safety of our scouts uh, and our adults who come to camp. I want to thank you for taking time to review this and look for more information uh, on our Facebook page, uh, on our council website, and through direct contacts of those units that are registered for camp. I want to thank Joe. Uh, I want to thank our camping uh, folks. I want to thank our executive board for their time and diligence for making sure we make the best decision we can. And I look forward to seeing you down the scouting trail. Thank you so much.